Hi everybody, um, this is Nona Tobin and um, I'm going to be presenting another episode in the long tale of how Nation Star and Joel Stokes stole a $500,000 house from me without being required to have any evidence to support their claims uh, subjected to any judicial scrutiny. So what I'm going to be talking about is what I call judicial jujitsu. This is where they use these tricks in court that are actually fraud and their way of using procedural um, jujitsu to get their way without the court realizing that they didn't have any evidence. Now the burden of proof belongs to the plaintiff. And in this situation, the quiet title dispute between Nona Tobin, me as an individual, and Nona Tobin as the trustee of uh, the Gordon B. Hansen Trust versus Nation Star and Jimmy Jack. And these uh, people managed to win without ever having to prove it in court. Okay, so Nation Star and their accomplices never met this burden of proof. And so I am accusing them, basically, of fraud. And I am going to be requesting that either this be judgment be vacated by reason of fraud and misrepresentation to the court, or and it be handled criminally, because this is totally stealing. OK, now, uh, there's a lot of cases that um, say the same thing, that you have to prove that you have standing before you can foreclose on a mortgage. And that's like the uh, nitty gritty of this case as far as Nation Star is concerned. Because uh, to have standing to foreclose on a mortgage, one must be legally entitled to enforce the note on, to which it relates. And I'll show you the evidence here. And Nation Star did not have standing, did not have any right to foreclose on a mortgage. And they just did their little judicial jujitsu trick to get out of having to go to trial. And, and trick the court into saying that I had already been heard, which I had not. Okay, so they have to, uh, in order to foreclose on a promissory note, the plaintiff must be the holder in order to be the real party in interest. Nation Star was not the holder, was not the real party in interest, and they just lied about saying that they were. Um, in another case, um, we're talking about uh, later in this presentation, judicial estoppel. And that prevents a party from contradicting its previous inconsistent position when a court has adopted and relied on it. And I'm going to be talking a lot about this because that's what I'm saying, is that Nation Star is judicially stopped from claiming that it ever was the note holder or ever was the beneficial owner of the Hanson Deed of Trust or ever was owed a $389,000 debt. And they said many different, they made many different claims, and then they rescinded them and changed them and, and everything so that the court didn't even realize they had no evidence. Okay, and another case here, uh, May versus PHH Mortgage Company, a party seeking to foreclose on a note and a mortgage must prove that it has standing to do so. Now, one of Nation Star's tricks is that they didn't try and foreclose on the Hanson Deed of Trust. They never filed or they never recorded a uh, notice of default, which is step one under the Nevada Revised Statute, Chapter 107. They have to do that. So this is not a foreclosure case of me saying they tried to foreclose on uh, the Hanson deed of trust and they didn't have standing. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that they lied to say that they did have standing. And so by using an, an, an abusive process, I'll call it a jujitsu, <laughs> jiu -jitsu, they used an HOA foreclosure and the quiet title action 
after an HOA foreclosure to gain standing that they didn't have. And the reason they did this side deal that I'll be talking about ad nauseum with Jimmy Jack is because I put it in the record that I knew that they could not foreclose on me. And so they had to do everything they could to get me out of the case so they could, um, you know, fake it with Jimmy Jack. Okay, so, but the core issue is still the same as far as did they have standing to even be in this quiet title case? Well, that's the question. Did, were they the note holder? And were they, uh, did they own the beneficial interest of the Hanson uh, deed of trust? I'm saying no, and I'm saying everything in this um, presentation will prove it. So the original lender to Hanson, Gordon Hanson, was uh, Western Thrift and Loan, and that was in 2004. And so in order for NationStar to claim that, that Hanson, after he passed away, um, and it was in default that somebody, you know, that they could, that NationStar could use that property as security and they could foreclose, they would have to show that they had endorsement, that the note that they wasn't made out to them, it was made out to Western Thrift and Loan, that, that the note had been endorsed over to them or it had been assigned to them or and there's an affidavit that, that was on record that showed what their standing was. Okay, further, they had to not only have that stuff, they had to have it at the time the complaint was filed. Now, the complaint was filed in 2015 as far as Jimmy Jack suing Bank of America. Why they sued Bank of America and not NationStar is a mystery. But standing also had to be established by the time NationStar sued Opportunity Homes in 2016. Why Nation Star sued Opportunity Homes and not Jimmy Jack? That's a mystery. Okay, then they have to have the standing. They have to have standing at the time the complaint was filed. Nation Star did not. Nation Star's first recorded claim was December 1st of 14. So that's important as we go through the evidence. Their only recorded claim before the end of discovery in the prior case was um, December 1st, 2014. And that was three months after the HOA had already foreclosed and extinguished the Hanson Deed of Trust, which is the way it works in Nevada. Okay, so the bank really didn't have anything. Nation Star was in these, these two cases, they, they combined, uh, consolidated the Nation Star versus Opportunity Homes and the um, Jimmy Jack versus um, Bank of America. Why they combined them is a mystery because Bank of America defaulted and um, so that case was closed. Nation Star versus Opportunity Homes, Nation Star never uh, pursued it. Nation Star became a, a, a defendant in intervention into the uh, Jimmy Jack case. Why they did it that way, you'll see. Okay, so in there, they, in discovery, now the discovery in the consolidated cases ended in uh, the end of February 2019. So if Nation Star didn't have the evidence by the time they filed their case in January of 16, at least they should have had it by the end of discovery. So all they had before the end of discovery was a copy of the promissory note and that was not even um, endorsed to them or to anybody they said gave them this uh, loan. Okay, so here's the second and third pages of the Hansen promissory note that all say copy right there on the top right. Looking at them a little closely, who was this endorsed to? So like I said, Western Thrift and Loan had it at the uh, beginning and they said, pay to the order of Flagstar Bank. Before that, on the, you know, the second page, they had said they had crossed it off so there wasn't 
anything to anybody on that page. <clears throat> and then the um, Black Star handed it over at some point to Countrywide. And Countrywide, it's blank. Countrywide didn't give it to anybody. So, how did it get to Nation Star? It didn't. Okay, now judicial estoppel, basically this is a doctrine that says the judge must discount your claims if you change your story on the record. So, there's a lot of cases about this that say that, that you claim something and you're, you can't just keep changing your mind, switching it, and especially if the court relied on it and you won. Okay, so that last case um, has the elements that you have to prove. If you're going to say, like I'm saying, Nation Star is judicially stopped from making any claim that it was owed a debt from the Hanson Deed of Trust or that it had any standing to be in a quiet title action that was between me and Jimmy Jack. So, they, I think you'll see by these um, documents that they pulled a fast one on the court. Okay, so the elements are that they had to knowingly make these two inconsistent um, statements and that the first time when they claimed it, like, like when nations are claimed that they were owed this 389000 and they claimed they got it from somebody in uh, 2011, and then they claimed they got it in 2014, and, you know, they just kept switching it and rescinding it. So, and you'll see, they did it in the same documents, and so they, they knew what they were doing. Um, and they won. They managed to convince the court to let them, uh, Nation Star and Jimmy Jack, settle out of court, and that their own little side deal was sufficient without Nation Star having to produce any evidence or go to trial or diddly squat. They won. And then they just kept right on going, lying, 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 so that uh, they could get out of it before. Um, before I ran out of money for attorney's fees, I guess. Okay, so, judicial estoppel. This says, a person intentionally makes statements that are accepted as true by a court, that the court may bar that party from relying on later statements clearly inconsistent with the earlier position. So, Nation Star made, knowingly made a bunch of false and contradictory claims to claim it was owed this debt. The court relied on that and dumped me out of there so that I lost a $500,000 house and Jimmy Jack won when Jimmy Jack didn't have any evidence either. I'll get to them later. Okay, Nation Star's claims were all false, but by this what I'm calling judicial jujitsu, the court never examined any evidence. 42 hearings, no evidence. And all of my documentary evidence excluded from trial because of misconduct of Jimmy Jack's attorney that the court didn't even realize was happening. Okay, the um, final thing is that they obstructed all my evidence and then, when I got into a new court, they claimed res judicata and claims preclusion so that the court in the second court denied my um, ability to present my evidence. So this evidence is going on the internet, and this evidence is going to law enforcement officials for criminal charges because there is no satisfaction coming out of the Nevada civil courts. Okay, so let's go to the specific evidence here. Okay, in the first time that they filed into a court, they were the plaintiff in a complaint against Opportunity Homes for Quiet Title. And they stated that they had standing because on, uh, on February 4th, 2011, a corporation assignment of Deed of Trust Nevada was recorded conveying to NationStar the beneficial interest under the deed of trust. 
and it has a little footnote there. So now the significance of saying 2011, I mean, making that particular lie, is because the, the important relevant times are ownership of the note before the HOA foreclosure sale. And this would be before the HOA foreclosure sale, which was August 15, 2014. So then they, this is how I know that they know that they were lying, is that they exhibit two in that same original complaint where they're supposed to be establishing their standing and their, their burden of proof, they have to prove this as the plaintiff, they said a true and correct copy of the notice of assignment of deed of trust recorded as book and instrument number 20141201. 518. Okay, the protocol for the instrument numbers in the county recorder's office are four digit year, two digit month, two digit day. That is December 1st, 2014. That is an actual, that is what they actually recorded. It was not in 2011 before the HOA sale. And they obviously knew it because the exhibit they attached was the real thing they recorded. Okay, on the next uh, page in there, under parties or on the page before, they said, Nation Star is now and at all times relevant. Herein it is the beneficiary under the deed of trust signed by Gordon Hansen, recorded on July 22nd, 04. Okay, a total, total lie. Now, that's critical because that's the thing they're supposed to prove. They did not prove it at all. They never had to submit anything to judicial scrutiny. And if they had, the judge would have seen that they, they didn't own it before the sale and that all of these were actual lies. Okay, so like, the next time, okay, we're going to the fourth inconsistency, is the actual exhibit in that complaint and that December 1st, 14 recording. Okay, so in this, where Nation Star is um, well, lying, so, you know, it's not just judicial estoppel that's my legal theory on this, it is fraud. It is stealing, it's stealing to claim you are owed a debt and then of that magnitude. Oh my God, I can't believe they got away with this. I just cannot let them get away with this. Anyway, the, um, this is the exhibit that was supposed to substantiate their claim that they became the beneficial owner of the Hanson Deed of Trust on February 4th, 2011. It is recorded by Nation Star, in which Nation Star says that Bank of America, Bank of America assigned it to them. And that Nation Star was authorized to execute this assignment as Bank of America's attorney in fact. However, Nation Star Mortgage is not and was not a, Bank of America's attorney, in fact, because there was no power of attorney. No power of attorney was disclosed. Now, you can maybe try and say, you know, you have somebody's power of attorney on a handshake deal, but it does not have any legal merit. And these people know that. They know that. They know how you handle property transactions. They know that you have to have a written, signed power of attorney with dates and, and all that stuff. I mean, geez, everybody else has to. So they didn't have it. So what else is wrong with this? Well, the other thing is that Bank of America did not have any interest to assign. Bank of America had defaulted already on that uh, Jimmy Jack case because 
Bank of America had lied their, in their own way, and I'll, I'll describe that later. But Bank of America did not have any interest. The um, one recorded claim that uh, Bank of America made uh, recorded on April 12th of 12, that was not a valid claim, and they walked it back. And so on um, September 9th, 2014, Bank of America didn't rescind their phony claim. They just kind of got it off their books by saying that they gave it to Wells Fargo. Anyway, so whether it was because Bank of America's recorded claim was void because it had no notary record and it was done by a, a robo-signer, whether that's the reason that uh, Bank of America didn't have any interest on uh, December or October 23rd of 2014, or because on September 9th, 2014, Bank of America recorded that they gave their interest, if any, to Wells Fargo. For either of those two reasons, there was nothing for NationStar to assign to itself because, because Bank of America didn't have anything. Okay, so here we're coming down to the next claim. Now, there's only two complaints um, in, in these uh, consolidated cases. So the complaint one uh, that was um, Jimmy Jack versus Bank of America we'll talk about later. And we already talked about the uh, complaint two, which uh, NationStar was the plaintiff against Opportunity Homes. And now we are going to talk about how NationStar got into being a defendant instead of a plaintiff. They, instead of pursuing their claims under uh, NationStar versus Opportunity Homes, they filed a motion to intervene on the Jimmy Jack versus Bank of America case that was already closed, that Bank of America already had defaulted and gone. And so they got in there, um, and they filed on June 2nd of 16 uh, a um, answer and affirmative defenses and counterclaim against Jimmy Jack. And <laughs> they claimed in this that they were the current beneficiary. So they say, they, in number 12 and in number 13, in their claim against Jimmy Jack that they are, in 2016, they are the current beneficiary. Now, if that December 1st, um, 2014, they were, they were the uh, beneficiary of record, but this, they rescinded. They rescinded this December 1st, uh, 14, later. And so saying they were current beneficiary is false. Okay, in that same thing, they said they were the current beneficiary because Wells Fargo assigned its interest to NationStar on December 1st of 14. No, <laughs> that's, not what they, that's not what they recorded. It, they recorded that Baina, Bank of America, gave it to them, assigned it to them, and recorded that on December 1st. Wells Fargo did not. Okay, so they figured that out after I asked them a bunch of questions in Discovery that they wouldn't answer. And then they recorded a week after Discovery was over that they were rescinding that claim. Okay, but we'll, we'll get back to that. No, I guess we'll go do it now. Okay, so the rescission, so the one claim that they had recorded before the end of discovery, they rescinded. They said as though, they, they said under oath that they hereby invalidate and nullify the assignment to the same extent and effect as though the assignment had never been issued and recorded. So they went through that whole trial for three years, 16, 17, and 18. They fought with uh, this case, and they never produced any evidence, and then they rescinded their only claim. 
Now, the interesting thing about it is that they, this was executed by their guy, their employee, Nation Star's employee, Mohammed Hamid. He signed this rescission as though he was the vice president of Bank of America and as though Nation Star was Bank of America's attorney in fact. Again, no disclosed power of attorney, nothing under oath like they said, you know. Anyway, they said, I guess they did rescind under oath, but nothing else under oath. Okay, so going back to that claim that they were saying in their claim against Jimmy Jack, they were saying that the exhibit was the actual exhibit. So in the exhibit, it said that on December 1st of 14, in the exhibit, it said Bank of America gave it to him, but in the body of their complaint, they said they got it from Wells Fargo. Okay, so what actually is in the exhibit Number five of that, uh, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, counterclaim against Jimmy Jack was what they recorded. The phony, phony thing, no power of attorney, saying that uh, Bank of America gave them something that they didn't have anything to give, and then they rescinded it. Okay, so here's the rescission. Uh, back, they said, we did this, you know, like... Okay, so we go through this whole trial. I mean, a lot of, uh, well into the six figures in attorney's fees. And then they go, oh, just kidding. Okay, so then I'm saying, well, you can't just keep changing your mind. Plus, the minute they finished rescinding that, their same guy, Mohammed Hamid, claimed to be the Wells Fargo vice president. And <laughs> and then Wells Fargo's non-existent interest was assigned to Nation Star by Nation Star's guy, acting as if he's the Wells Fargo's vice president, and without any power of attorney. There's just no end to these people. Okay, so as I said, you know, like they're trying to get rid of me. And so, I mean, there's a lot of, there's parties that are making claims, like I'm making a claim as an individual that I should get that house because I have the deed that assigned me all of the interest of the Gordon B. Hansen Trust, which I closed in 2017 as insolvent. So what they did was, Nation Star filed a motion for summary judgment against Jimmy Jack. Jimmy Jack never answered that 2016 counterclaim. And so Jimmy Jack was in default. And so Nation Star should have just gone for default. Could have just gone for default. But they, were, they weren't trying to do that. They filed a... Uh, a notice of intent to take default, and then Jimmy Jack, you know, did something. But this, this whole thing that they're doing was just to get rid of me because Jimmy Jack would make a deal with them, and I said, no, you are lying, and I can prove it. So they had to get rid of me. Anyway, the, um, they said in that motion for summary judgment against Jimmy Jack, that number five, after Baina assigned its interest to Wells Fargo, that was what I mentioned, September 9th of 14, an assignment outside the chain of title from Baina to Nation Star was recorded on 2014. And so that outside the chain of title is a euphemism that they are using to cover up the fact that they had no authority whatsoever to record that, and they did. And then they said, 
that Wells Fargo assigned the deed of trust to Nation Star by an assignment on March 8th of 2019. Again, a week after the end of discovery. And then the next thing they say is true. Nation Star has serviced the loan since December 1st, 2013, and Bain has serviced it before that. It's true. That's all they were. They were the servicers, both of them trying to fake it so that they could get standing to foreclose on a note they did not own. Bank of America at least had the sense to get out before filing uh, these false claims like um, NationStar did, though. Okay, so now NationStar has made a, a motion for quiet title against Jimmy Jack. I filed a whole bunch of stuff to put a stop to this, including going to the Attorney General and saying, this is fraud. You, you need to stop this, which he ignored. Anyway, so then the uh, uh, Nation Star just withdrew its complaint, withdrew its motion for summary judgment. So they did not proceed with this. They did not do anything. They just withdrew it. In the motion for summary judgment, they withdrew their uh, unjust enrichment claim, and, it, and then the day that they managed to get the court to strike my counter motion for summary judgment and my objection to this, they got them stricken from the record because they got the court to believe that I had never been a party I had just been filing this stuff for my health, I guess. Okay, so how did Nation Star fool the court? And this judicial jujitsu, I'll talk about this in another, uh, another video, but basically they just lied to her face. They told her, they told her just, oh, she had never admitted me as a, as a party, and they serve notice on me and all parties into the case not to come to the hearing about uh, that motion for summary judgment because it was continued. And yet, Jimmy Jack's attorney and Nation Star's attorney, after telling through the court system, do not appear. It is uh, moved from... Uh, April 23rd hearing to May 7th, don't come. They had the hearing anyway and took and got all my, all my documents stricken from the record based on lying to the judge. And then in this, when they cut down their, uh, you know, when they withdraw their motion, they also asked the court to vacate the hearing, which they had anyway. So, the court, how did the court not see these inconsistencies? I mean, admittedly, there's like a bazillion documents, and, and the courts do not look at that stuff in the level of detail because they rely on the attorneys as officers of the court with a duty of candor to the court. They rely on their oral presentation. And they do not expect in a million years that there would be so much fraud just lying right to their face. If they did, they certainly, she certainly wouldn't have excluded all the evidence from trial after having 42 hearings without looking at the evidence. But people see what they expect to see. And basically, this system, I say, is rigged in favor of corporate attorneys against pro se litigants, which I was for a good part of this, and individuals who have to pay an attorney to defend themselves, which I was also in another part of this, because over four years of filing into this and over $100,000 in attorney's fees, my claims were never heard on their merits yet. And that's why I'll be publishing them in as much detail as necessary to make it clear that they won by cheating. They won by lying to the court and by f filing false um, statements into the property record, 
which really has to be stopped.